Hi, my name is Judy Van Coyman, and you're watching Life Issues. October's show is about food insecurities. My guests are Dana, uh, Jana, and uh, with the food drive, and Colleen with Lasagna Love. Welcome, both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Jana, I'm going to start with you first. Why did you want to start the food drive and when? Great question. Um, my husband and I started the food drive together in November of 2020, and we all know what was going on then. Um, and the reason we started it was both because we saw how much hunger there was caused by the pandemic, but also we, through that, found out about food rescue. We had no idea that it was a thing. Um, and food rescue is res literally the rescuing food that would have been thrown away. And getting it, providing those wheels to people who are experiencing food insecurity, either directly through a food pantry, soup kitchen, or other kind of program. So the why is the rampant hunger during the pandemic, and the when was you know, the end of 2020. So it's not even been two years mm. since we started. And what is your mission statement? Our mission is pretty much what I said, um, to keep food out of landfills and instead to its highest purpose, which is people who need food. So the short version is we connect food with people. And can you please talk about by the numbers? Ah, um, so our numbers, we just passed an exciting milestone actually, um, which is in less than two years, we've rescued 400,000 pounds of food, wow. which is 200 tons. And before we started doing this work, I didn't even know that a ton was 2,000 pounds. <laughs> now I do. Mm. Um, so it's staggering to us. Um, and another number are over 150 volunteers enable us to rescue that much food. Mm. Um, it's staggering that that much food was going to waste. And we're in a very small region just north of Boston. Um, so if you think about how much that, it, it's roughly 20,000 pounds a month, 5,000 pounds a week. Um, and that translates to 350,000-ish equivalent meals and a whole lot of greenhouse gases kept out of landfills. Um, and we're just a little, a little teeny nonprofit. Mm. So yeah, that's... Numbers, I'm glad you asked about numbers, but even more important than that are the people we see every day beyond the num that represent the numbers. Yeah, because I'm sure you're making a lot of people happy. Yeah, it's I mean, Teddy in the senior housing two blocks from our house always wants tomatoes. And Teddy and his tomatoes <laughs> matter way more than 400,000 pounds, mm -hmm. you know. Thank you. Yeah. I'll give Teddy some tomatoes. I, I have know. some. I know. A lot of us have tomatoes right now. You <laughs> I deal with a lot of tomatoes. True. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Colleen, how was Lasagna Love started and when? Uh, very similarly, out of uh, 2020, uh, it began kind of grassroots. Uh, Rhiannon Men, who is um, based out of California, she was just looking to, you know, similarly solve her neighbors who were struggling financially, um, didn't didn't have uh, money to make and meat, so she started making just homemade lasagnas because it's, mm -hmm. you know, spread love through food. Um, I know my family is Italian, <laughs> or I'm married into the Italian family, so mm -hmm. that is most certainly it. So 2020, and it's just, it's grown exponentially from there. Wow. wow. And what is the mission? Uh, it's simply stated, it is uh, feeding families, spreading kindness, and strengthening communities. Cool. Good. And what if someone can't make a lasagna? Yes, yeah, so certainly there's other ways to, to help. Um, if you, you can transport, there's, you can help in reaching out to your job. We have a lot of corporate sponsors. There's, if you go on the website, uh, www.lasagnalove.org, you can sponsor a chef. You can make a one-time donation. Um, there's really a, a number of opportunities, and really just spread the word. So follow Instagram, Facebook, um, however you can. Good. And um, the, Gina, um, who do you service? Uh, well, in in our region north of Boston, anyone 
who is experiencing food insecurity, struggling with not having enough food. Um, so we have a number of pantries and soup kitchens we serve. Um, we serve 12 communities north of Boston. We started in our town of Melrose where there are two um, pantries. So the core of our mission started there started expanding out to neighboring communities that touch Melrose as people found out about what we were doing, started asking us to help. Most of it was people coming to us saying, can you help? It still is. Um, so our greatest deliveries are still in Melrose, um, in addition to all the senior housing uh, facilities, one of which where Teddy lives near us. <laughs> um, and the bulk of our deliveries as you might expect, are in Everett, Malden, and Lynn, which have poverty rates between 15, 12, 12 and 20 percent. So that's the greatest need. Um, but the most important thing, whether it's direct service, because we do have um, some, some direct services, we take food directly into the senior centers to their community rooms. Um, which helps with some of the stigma of going to pantries and bringing food to the people. Um, but whether it's that director taking to the largest pantries, Bread of Life in Malden, um, Everett Grace Food Pantry in Everett, and My Brother's Table in Lynn are the three biggest ones. Um, the way we serve is by making sure that we get the right food to the right people at the right time. It's all fresh, it stays in our cars about the same time as someone going to the grocery store. Um, so in, in the who we serve question, it's, it's important in serving those people that we get them the kind of food they need at the time they need it, as fresh as possible, because what we're dealing with is fresh, perishable food mostly, instead of we transport cans and boxes of food, but pantries have a lot of that already, so we're getting a lot of produce, bread, and prepared foods. Okay. And so you mentioned about the surrounding towns that you um, service, so you're not just Melrose based. Not just Melrose. You started in Melrose. Started, started in Melrose. I don't know if I could list them all. It's 12. Um, <laughs> Melrose, Wakefield, Stoneham, Saugus, Malden, Lynn, Everett, Revere, Swampscott, Woburn, two more I'm missing. Oh well, that's, that's still out of my head. Pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. good. I'm missing someone. I'm sorry, someone that I missed. <laughs> and can you please tell us your story? Ah, uh, um, short version. Uh, from Alabama, uh, preacher's family. So I come by this honestly. Um, volunteering at shelters um, from when I, as long as I can remember, and also from other sides of it. You know, my mom would tear napkins in half to make sure she was using resources and was very creative with leftovers and made a really good lasagna too. Yeah. <laughs> um, so come by that naturally. Ended up here in Boston for school as so many people do. Um, met my husband. Had a completely different couple of careers. I was um, the first personal assistant to Keith Lockhart at the Boston Pops wow. and worked there mm -hmm. for 13 years and then I was co-owner of an event planning company in Boston for another 13 years. Two lucky careers, I guess. And left right at the end of 2019 to pursue a career in community service. My mom had just died at the end of 2019. And that inspired me, thank you. Her life inspired me to realize that what I really wanted to do was community service. And I owe so much of this to my my partner in this, my husband, because I came into our family room and said, told him about food rescue. I had interviewed for a job at one. It didn't work out. He said, why don't you start one? And believed in our ability to do it. It became us pretty quick, but mm, so cool. that's how we ended up here. Yeah, neat. It is neat. Yeah, such a warm feeling, too, that you know that you're helping others. And and all that. And he, had, he was also, he was a classical musician for 30 years, but had always wanted, especially interestingly enough, to help um, people, seniors especially, so he's especially fond of Teddy. 
I keep talking about Teddy. Well, Teddy sounds awesome. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's not just numbers. I guess that's why. It's like we're bringing food to real people. It's not mm -hmm. just it's pounds, you know. Yep. And Colleen, what kind of impact has taken place with lasagna love? Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy um, to see how it's grown because I, I also started in 2020. So since founding in 2020, we're now in three countries. Um, it, we have over 35,000 volunteers and chefs um, and have been able to reach and impact over a million people. That's amazing. So it's, it's really amazing growth to see and experience at the same time. Mm, cool. What three countries are you? Uh, we're in the U.S., Canada, and Australia. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. Cool. Mm. That's fast. It is. <laughs> <laughs> what is the process for someone to make lasagna? Yeah, so if you want to volunteer, again, you know, if you go to the website, you can sign up as a local chef. Um, you get to choose how often you have the ability to volunteer. You get to choose if you can accommodate certain allergies. Um, as part of this, you'll get onboarded with a local regional uh, leader and you'll take a food safety course, of course, before we go in and on uh, however cadence that you sign up for. Matching is done each week with local families who sign up and you communicate directly with the families to make arrangements for the meals and then drop off at a, a time that's convenient for them. And of course, given 2020, it's, it's contactless drop-offs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And can people add to the lasagna, like add, um, making a salad or dessert when they drop off? We do have chefs who have the ability um, a lot of our chefs actually um, often have to budget and, and maybe struggle themselves. Um, but so as part of the sign up, if you sign up to get a lasagna, you are likely just to get a lasagna. Um, so don't expect extras. Um, sometimes some chefs and some stories you really connect. So want to do a little extra. Okay. And I'm going to move over to um, Jane now. Do you collect non-perishables? We do, yes. In fact, we have four other programs other than Food Rescue, and that's one of them. We have ongoing collection bins in five businesses and four residences in Melrose to make it easy to, for people to donate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we just have an ongoing collection of volunteers that yeah. retrieve things from there, and we get them to bankers right away. Do you see um, during the holidays you really get a big demand oh yeah actually for both of you probably mm. right yeah Very absolutely much. that's just the pattern i think yeah for any kind of food rescue yeah and do you rely basically on donations yes i'm glad i'm glad you asked because we too have a website <laughs> www.thefooddrive.org uh there's a the in there thefooddrive.org um and we re rely solely on donations we're grassroots as well um if anyone's interested, we have monthly sustaining donors, uh, which are really helping us plan and know we can move forward. Since we're um, only two years, not even two years in, we're still working on getting the grant funding. Um, we're having our first event this November, our first fundraiser. Um, it's called Harvest at Memorial Hall in Melrose on November 12th. Tickets on sale soon. <laughs> um, so we're working on making sure that we can keep doing this into the future because we started it from scratch. Um, mm. It's my full-time job, my husband's half-time job to run it. We're the only professional staff and then those 150 volunteers. So any and all donations are warmly welcomed. Good. And what if someone would like to volunteer? We have also on our action page on our website, you, there's a tab to donate and a tab to volunteer. Um, we have 30 shifts a week of all different kinds. Um, from it take, We don't have a, a vehicle, official vehicle of the food drive yet. So it takes three, sometimes four cars on Saturdays when we rescue from Whole Foods to get the amount of food that First time volunteers, are sh you see shock on their face, to, to transport that amount of food, uh, three cars. So we have those shifts. Mm -hmm. From that to um, our smallest is a, a two block rescue from Buckaloo's General Store downtown, uh, Melrose to Pantry of Hope, two blocks away. Uh, but this wasn't happening before. This food wasn't connecting with people. 
And that's the food that the people of the pantry want first. Of course, it's handmade, yummy sandwiches and salads and prepared food and cookies and bakery items and two blocks. The, the volunteer's done in like 15 minutes. I know. It's a, it's a wide range of activity. Mm -mm. And can you please give us um, your contact info if anyone would like more info? Oh, yes. Um, either the website, you can reach us that way, or um, fooddrivemelrose at gmail.org is our email address. Okay, great. And Colleen, what is the Donor Bill of Rights? Well, with the Donor Bill of Rights, so <clears throat> essentially from a nonprofit perspective, it's a, uh, it's a, a promise to all donors of you know, philanthropy. So we do, everybody is here to make the lives better for, for others. So we are open with communication, we are uh, open with financials. You know that anything that you invest, it's going to a good cause. Okay. And does Lasagna Love totally rely on donations? We do as well, yes. So. Uh, each one of the chefs that sign up, um, so fully, it's their own money. Uh, so that's why it's really, really important for us to also, if you feel that you, you can donate, um, you're really supporting the chefs directly. Uh, cost of materials are going up. We were just discussing this from a supply chain perspective. So um, chefs, to be able to continue cooking and helping families can really appreciate the donations. Mm, definitely. And if anyone would like more info, can you please give us your contact info? Yes, absolutely. Again, our website is, you can do everything from there, sign up to donate, sign up to sponsor, sign up um, if to receive a lasagna, um, and also send an email. It's info at lasagnalove.com, um, and same, www.lasagnalove.com. Okay, great. I'm sorry, but that's all the time that we have. Thank you both for all you do for those in need. Before I um, sign off, I would like to share an app that was... Um, that I learned about this past weekend. It's in the Play Store on your phone, and it's called Got Food? Question mark. And you can um, enter your zip code, your location, um, how many within how many miles you want to find a food pantry or any kind of um, uh, soup kitchens, etc. Um, below that is because of closures due to COVID-19. We encourage you to call to confirm hours, and right below there. It says need SNAP assistance. So apparently they will help you fill out your application if you're looking for uh, more information on SNAP. So um, I thought when I was introduced to that, that was awesome. Um, more people probably don't even know how to um, get into food pantries or what, et cetera. But I'd love to hear your thoughts and suggestions. Please send them to lifeissuestv at gmail.com. And remember, Live each day to the fullest and celebrate life.
Hello, future lasagna chef. I'm Rhiannon and I'm the founder of Lasagna Love. I'm so excited that you're going to be joining this community. This started honestly as an accident. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, I was feeling helpless and looking for a way to support families in my community. And I just started cooking and delivering meals. And that was March of 2020. And here we are now with thousands and thousands of volunteers around the globe, all feeding families and spreading kindness in their communities. It's an incredibly inspiring community to be a part of. This video will show you a little bit about how to sign up and then what to expect once you have signed up. So first, below this video, you'll see a button that says sign up. If you click that, it will take you to a form that will give us everything that we need to get you matched to somebody in your community. And we really wanna make this as easy as possible for you. That's what's beautiful about Lasagna Love. So you'll tell us how often you wanna be matched to a family, how many families each time, how far you're willing to drive, all those details. And whatever works for you, works for us. We have some volunteers who will deliver one lasagna a month and some that will deliver for a week. And both of those are fantastic. Once you've filled out that form, you'll get a welcome email that connects you to the local leader in your area if there is one. Um, that email will also give you access to our online portal, which is what you'll log into to manage everything having to do with Lasagna Love. In addition to the resources on the portal, you'll be invited to join our National Lasagna Love Facebook group, a group exclusively for Lasagna Love volunteers, where we share stories, tips, ideas, gratitude, all things Lasagna Love. You can also reach out to your local leader with questions or email us at volunteer at lasagnalove.org. You are about to join an incredible community of very inspiring people, and I know you're gonna love it. So, happy cooking and welcome to Lasagna Love.